what are we going to talk about today? Well, right now it's about 20 degrees, 22 degrees here in the Ozarks near Mountain View, Arkansas. That helps. But that's not cold. Not compared to what we got coming up. So we're going to talk about preparing for the cold. How do you get ready for a blast of cold weather? Now you might say, well, you're from the mountains of Arkansas. You don't know what cold is? <clears throat> no, I'm actually from Illinois. Central Illinois. Peoria area. I know what cold is because back where I come from, next week they're going to have about four days in a row. They're not going to see a temperature that doesn't have a minus sign in front of it. But here, we're just going to have some low single digits couple nights high single digits couple nights matter of fact tonight's supposed to get down to nine so it's the beginning of the cold and tomorrow we're supposed to get a blast of snow and then a few more days of cold before it warms back up to the 30s for a few days so as you might know i heat my house with wood so one of the things you got to do is get enough wood ready to go and get it positioned properly have i done that One of the things you can do is carry in some firewood, which as you can see, I need to do. There we go. Is that better? That would be enough wood to last 24 hours, give or take, depending on the wind and the temperature. Every day. I do. But, I did prepare the other day, and it is... A little warmer. It was in the low 50s. And I got a little bit of wood up underneath this roof here. Ready to go in. So there's that. Some of the other things that I've done. Is out here. And this is something I'm going to fix eventually. But it's farther down the list than a lot of other things were that's my well actually my well is way over on the other side of the property but this is where the pump or not the pump the pressure tank and the switch and all that kind of stuff is at got a little heater in it a little milk house heater and it's an insulated box problem is the pipe comes out from underneath that box and it's kind of shallow at first so what I did was I took the mower with the bag on it, bagged up some leaves and stuff, and as you can see, I put a nice pile there to give it a little extra insulation. Something else you might want to do if you're expecting a blast of cold weather, and this is rather important. How you doing, Rascal? There's my kitty cat, Rascal. He's a good boy. He's a good boy. When he was young, he was a rascal, and he still is sometimes. But something else you could do, or something else you should do, it's rather important, actually. And that is, make sure that your cars are all frost-proofed and ready to go. Make sure they've got plenty of insulation in them, so that they're prepared for the cold weather. And something else I, I did, that you may not have to do, and I don't know how well this will show up on on the camera but out there the chicken shed out there I covered the door of the chicken shed so that the wind doesn't just whistle through there and get colder than it needs to and I thought I'd give everybody a closer up look at what I did for the chickens I blocked off this corner of their pen here reason being that when it gets really cold, you can see i got a heat lamp in there. Take and plug in up here. Boom. And it'll keep their water warm and give them a warm place to stand if they need to. But they say it's not really good to heat the chicken's coop. Because chickens are good down to below zero. <clears throat> so I'm not really trying to heat their coop. Besides that, they need to perch up here. They don't need to be huddled down there. They'll just knock the water over, probably. But 
my thinking is at least their water will stay thawed out. And then you can see down on the other end, I covered that door with the same stuff I covered this door with. <clears throat> it's just some house wrap I had left over. I had a little extra, I'm not done with it, but it keeps that wind from just whistling right through that doorway. And then these guys out here, the turkeys, the big turkeys, the one big turkey goes inside, the other one he doesn't. Maybe he just can't because he is a little bit bigger than the first one, but or maybe he just doesn't bother to try. But anyway, if necessary, I have an outlet right there and I have another heat lamp I can bring out here. So thankfully though, they were saying several degrees below zero. And the recent forecast has made it like four or five degrees above zero, which is plenty warm enough for turkeys and chickens, I've read and heard. And look at them chickens going after that water. Yep, their water was frozen this morning, so now that they got water, they're drinking it up. Thirsty. I filled both these tubes last night, so there's no shortage of food. We should be good to go for a few days of cold weather. Thankfully, here in Arkansas northern arkansas a few days is all we usually get then we'll be back to the 30s 40s 50s a few weeks we'll be on the warm-up looking forward to that and apparently thanks to bob i need to get a new cover for that because bob chews up everything so i'm not sure what i'm going to do about that i'll probably have to run to the store and buy one before the Big it freezes if it hasn't already. Well, since Bob the dog chewed up my old cover, I put in I went and got a new frost proof cover. Actually, I got two in case he chews this one up and put over that. And I'm gonna take this old window, lean over there to hopefully keep Bob from eating that up again. There's just so many things that you gotta do to get ready for a freeze like this. And that's one of them. Make sure you clean that out too. Keep that clean because it clogs up. Make sure the dog's got fresh water in his bowl so that he has something to drink. Now to dump out the ice chunk and refill it with fresh water. Yeah, there's no water outside for poor old Bob, is there? There's no water outside for Bob. It's all froze. At least it's nice and warm in the basement, so it stays nice and warm and keeps it from freezing. But there's so many things to do to get ready for cold weather, especially if you heat your own, heat your house with wood. But see, we not only have cold weather, but we also have snow coming. And they're saying maybe some ice later in the week. So what's another important thing to do? This is something you can't do. And if your house is all electric, I really feel sorry for you because power goes out. You're just in sad shape. You're in a sad, sorry shape. What are you going to do? How are you going to heat your house if the heat is electric? Well, I guess you're just going to get cold. I don't know. But right there is something else. I got the generator out of the shed. Put a little splash of gas in it, fired it up, let it run, make sure it runs for a few minutes and gets warm. Check it out, make sure it's in good running order, and then get it in a place where it's ready to be used, which is where it's at right now. If I'm going to run it, it is sitting pretty much where it's going to be. Oh, and don't forget to get gas, because it won't run without gasoline. An electric generator is just something that it doesn't happen yeah I know they have batteries that battery backups that you can use if you have an extra ten thousand dollars sitting around but most of us don't so we spend a few hundred and get us a gas generator and something else I'd strongly recommend if you especially if you live in an area prone to blackouts you see that tank out there that rascal is sitting on top of if you don't have access to natural gas, I strongly recommend you get some LP gas. Because gas works even when the power is out. 
have a gas stove in the kitchen. I have a tankless gas water heater, which will run off the generator because, yeah, they do need a little electricity. A regular gas water heater would be even better. No electricity at all needed for that. And if you're out in the country like me, you got to think about your well pump. They don't run without electricity. So I guess you could say we're all kind of at the mercy of the electric conglomerate, if you want to call it that. But if you get a generator, you can be self-sufficient. And being self-sufficient in a world that's trying to force everybody into an electric mold is an important thing. It gives you a certain amount of freedom to do what you want, freedom to be what you want. And this is slowly being eroded, but don't worry, nothing lasts forever. <clears throat> so that's just a few things that I wanted to talk about that, you know, it's good to be prepared. If there's a snap of cold weather coming, you don't want frozen pipes. And that's another thing, frozen pipes. If you have pipes that might freeze, they're in a spot near your house, near an outside wall maybe, that might freeze. Make sure you leave a pencil lead stream trickling out of your faucet during the night or during the day if you're not home because that will help keep them from freezing because moving water generally won't freeze. It's another good thing to think about. There's so many things to think about. But being prepared for the cold is important. You don't want to get stuck out in the cold with your pants down so to speak <clears throat> because that would be embarrassing if you get my drift and it could also be expensive having to get frozen water lines repaired plus the water damage that they do because when they thaw out they just turn into a fountain it's important to make sure the water lines don't freeze that would be one of the top priorities really Making sure you have a heating source, making sure you keep your water running, make sure you got your your vehicles winterized, plenty of antifreeze in them. Those are three of the top things that you really want to think about when it's going to get cold. That That's three of the top things I can think of off the top of my head. I'm sure there's more that you can think of. Maybe you could put that down in the comments. Tell me what it is that I missed, because I'm sure I missed something. There's so many things, and there's some things I don't have to do that maybe you do need to take care of, you do need to think about. <coughs> Something else you might want to think about, right over there, I don't know why he's staying so far away, but old Bob, here Bob, oh Bob, what are you doing, oh, what are you doing, he's like I'm standing in the sun, I don't want to go over there in the shade, it's cold over there. <laughs> I made sure he's got a good insulated house to get in because he's always been an outside dog. He always stays outside. He's acclimated to the weather. But he needs a warm place to get into. He's got an insulated dog house that's sized just right for his size. And since he tears everything up, <clears throat> I uh, don't normally have a door on it because he'll just chew it up. So later today, I'm going to staple piece of cloth over the doorway to help help keep it warmer in there and hopefully he won't tear it off of there before the cold's over with if he does i got another piece of cloth but he can't come in he's not house trained and he tears everything up he just chews up anything that ain't bolted down and made of steel i've seen him chewing on the pieces of my firewood before he's just at that stage and hopefully he gets out of that stage they say sometimes they do it from boredom, but he's got the cats to play with. He's got the other little dog that he's an inside-outside dog, plays with, Gobi. And so I don't think it's boredom. The only other thing they say is maybe anxiety or fear. Well, when he was younger, he had a twin. His name's Bob. He had a twin named Marley. And the people we got him from came home one day, and Marley was just gone. And Bob was standing up on top of their picnic table on their porch, scared. So they kind of figure that maybe it was coyotes. 
possible around here bobcat because they were young dogs at the time they were much smaller than bob is now <clears throat> and i don't think he realizes that the coyotes aren't going to bother him because he could probably kill them he's got them outweighed by a good 15 or 20 pounds and his bark boy when he barks he sounds like he's 150 pounds sounds like marmaduke when he barks so that shouldn't be a problem but anyway he just can't come in so I make sure that he's got a nice, comfortable place to get into to stay warm. It's right on the front porch next to the house, out of the wind. So he should be fine. The cats, they like to come outside and play, but when it's cold, they don't stay outside long. That's why Rascal is following me around. He's like, come on, Dad, let me in, let me in, I'm freezing. It's only 22 degrees out here. I don't even have my hood up. <clears throat> And if you've got some sensitive plants outside, you might want to make sure you mulch them real good for a cold snap like this. Kind of out of ideas. Like I said, put them down in the description. And if you found this interesting or useful, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you haven't. And we'll keep making videos. Thanks a lot for watching.